Welcome to another video. So this video is going to be a little more serious than the majority of my videos because today I'm going to be talking about legal troubles and brushes with the law and what's going to happen to you as a foreigner if you get into any kind of legal trouble here in China. Now when it comes to dealing with the law and legal issues in China, you as a foreigner are going to be at a vast disadvantage and I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why. First of all, there is a big language barrier Number two, cultural misunderstandings. But number three, the biggest one, is the rabid, irrational ultranationalism that is unfortunately ingrained into the majority of the population, whether they like it or not. Now, this isn't to say that there aren't some perks to being a foreigner here in China. Having a foreign face has gotten me out of lots of small little problems, you know, things like uh, small little law issues like crossing the road at the wrong place or you know perhaps a, I don't know just doing something I wasn't supposed to do although I wasn't aware of it that kind of thing could get a local person into trouble but being a foreigner they would rather not to deal with the hassle or they don't want to lose face or something like this so they usually let you off the hook so I would say when it comes to very minor brushes with the law being a foreigner can actually be a positive however when the chips are down and you're dealing with a serious situation being a foreigner will definitely be to your disadvantage. I am going to relate a story of something very serious that's currently happening to somebody I know. Now, he obviously cannot appear on camera because he's busy going through the legal proceedings and he doesn't want to jeopardize his situation. But it's very important that everybody knows exactly what's going on because this kind of thing is a lot more common than you think. Now, if any of you have seen my original Our Chinese Girls Easy video, you will know that I spoke very clearly about the fact that if you get into a relationship, you have to treat it seriously. Because Chinese girls are very jealous and they go absolutely crazy if you mess around on them or do anything like this. Now this guy, he is a bit of a scoundrel. I'm not going to defend his actions. In fact, I think he, his uh, behavior is rather abhorrent and uh, I personally would never condone cheating on anyone but this is the story I'm just going to relate it to you I have triple checked the facts and this is exactly what happened now this friend of mine has been dating a local Chinese girl for about a year now and recently he started cheating on her with somebody else now she found out and she came to confront him at his house and she got into the apartment and she started trashing the place like just breaking everything in sight going absolutely crazy and this is something I've warned people about before this is something that very often happens and a lot of my friends have had this happen to them. If they have messed around on their girlfriends or tried to break up with them or anything like this, very, very often they've had their apartments trash, their clothes cut up, all sorts of strange things. But anyway, this is where it starts to get really nasty. So she trashes the place and she's attacking him. He's trying to get her out of there. She bites a massive chunk out of his arm. She's scratching him, punching him, all this kind of stuff. And during all of this nonsense, while ejecting her, he hit her and hurt her. And he basically gave her a black eye during the process. Now, I'm not, this is the part I'm not entirely sure of. I don't know if he actually punched her, if it was a flat hand, but whatever the case, he ended up giving her a black eye and got her out of the apartment. So he got her out, locked her up. Next day or so, he gets the police on his ass saying that, hey, listen, uh, you have to come down to the station. She's demanding compensation. She's got her whole family there and she's demanding 40,000 RMB. And the way the police work here, the way the legal system works here is the police don't actually like to get involved in these kind of domestic disputes or anything like that. But they will basically mediate until both parties have come to an agreement and then they kind of let it go. So this is the story. They basically said, you have to make her happy. You have to compensate her and then everything will be okay. But here's the rub, they took his passport away. So basically they took his passport away and said, you can get your passport back once we're satisfied that she's been compensated and that everything is okay. So she demanded the 40,000 RMB 
which he had to then go beg and borrow from all his friends and whatever because he didn't have any choice of the matter. There's no way that he, as a lone foreigner living in China, can stand up to the fact that she and her entire family are there at the police station bending the police, you know, the police's ear in Chinese and of course they understand the situation. His Chinese is fairly good and that's why it isn't worse than it is. But basically her whole family was there plus a whole bunch of people they knew, sort of like uh, guys standing around, and they demanded this money. So, he realized that the only way for him to get his passport back and the only way that he could actually get out of the situation was to, of course, pay the money. And of course, you know, he is at fault. He did, he did hurt her, but he didn't, you know, wasn't, he didn't break any bones or anything like that. Anyway, so basically, long story short, she gets the money. Well, he brings her the money and gives her a certain amount, and then she says no. She's decided she doesn't want the money anymore. She wants him to go to jail. But now you see, this is the rub is, of course she wants the money, but by doing this, she's pushing for more money. And she's got her family pushing her, because now suddenly they see they've got a meal ticket here, pushing her to push for, for more money. And he's pretty much powerless. So what's happened is now she's demanding more money. He's given her more money, another 16,000 on top of what he'd already given her. Now she wants close to 200,000 RMB in compensation because now she's making up all sorts of, oh, she's going to need surgery, she's going to need this, she's going to need that, which is, of course, nonsense. But she's got him by the short and curlies. And the reason is because he's a foreigner and she's here with her entire support base, her entire family, and of course the police are going to side with the local person over the foreigner every single time. So the only way for him to get his passport back is for him to somehow resolve the situation to the point where she's happy and her family's happy and then he can get his passport back. So he's in a very bad situation at the moment. Now I wish him all the luck in the world but this is a very staunch warning to every single one of you guys out there that are currently dating or planning to date a Chinese girl. Don't take the relationship lightly. This is not the first story that I've heard and this is not some second-hand story. The guy has told me himself okay he contacted me when it was happening i know it's a fact okay take your take your relationship seriously here realize that if you do mess about or you do uh scorn a chinese girl it's going to go badly okay so pick and choose correctly now the next thing i'm going to talk about is completely different this isn't as much getting into trouble with the law but it's basically the cultural differences and in fact incompetence of the local police that can cause a lot of trouble for a foreign person especially a woman who is living and working here now my friend green girl who you may know from some of my previous videos got into a pretty bad situation recently with a stalker but the best obviously would be for me to let her tell the story to you so i'm going to switch over to that and i'll be back with you guys as soon as we're done and then just this morning i went to the police station because i also talked to the mexican embassy and they were like oh you first have to go and make your your yourself you have to make a report about it sure and i thought i was kind of alone because nobody knew what to do that was the worst part nobody really knew for sure what to do everybody was just like block him or maybe go and do a report but nobody was like hey let's go together or do you need any help I wanna call him like a man of um, a friend of mine. No, he was like, hey, I'm gonna just talk to this guy to stop, to stop it from being harassing you. Sure. And I went to the police station, and when I arrived to the police station, I was like, hey, I'm being harassed by this man. And there was a young Chinese police there, and he just laughed like, ha. Huh! And then he looked yeah. at the others, and and everybody laughed like, ha. Huh! And I was like, seriously. Yeah, there's yeah. this guy calling me non-stop this and this and this and they were like so what just block him there's not much to do about it it's a personal situation there's yeah. not like their meaning was like there's not like a law that we can follow to such matters so just block him put him in the blacklist yeah. and, and i was like i did already that the thing it's, yeah. it has been already developing to some very deeper extents sure Anyways, and then I was like, I'm not going to leave this office until you guys help me because it seems like nobody else can help me. And I ordered, I was the one to suggest what to do. So I ordered them to call him and to have me also on the, on the call, on the speaker, and tell him to stop 
uh, stop sending me any messages, stop contact me, stop harassing in all sense. Mm. And when I start screaming in the police office, it was when the officers start becoming a little bit worried about it, it was kind of a serious situation. Yeah. And then they asked me to let the phone to them, and then they said to him like, you, you heard her, it's over, you better stop, you know what to do, okay, bye. And then they gave me a serious look and were like, okay, if this happens again, if he still contacts, just come back and we will do something about it. And this is so far it. And then he contacted me, <laughs> offering some help, and thank you very much. It's very, very unpleasant to know that you are kind of alone there as a woman here and this situation happens and there's nobody. All of a sudden there is nobody. All right, finally, I want to address what I said in the beginning of the video about the ultranationalism. Okay, and I'm going to tell you how that actually affected me in a big way. I've alluded to this in the past and I have actually told the story once or twice but not in its entirety so here we go I'm going to tell you my personal situation that I had with the law here my biggest run-in with the law I should say and that basically revolves around this whole ultranationalism situation so it goes like this let me break it down I was out drinking with a friend and we decided that we wanted to go get a massage afterwards this is years ago okay probably I don't know, four years ago, five, no, this was probably about five years ago. So there was a massage place in the local area that we had, which, you know, I used to go to get foot massages, but they also had sort of dodgy, happy ending massages upstairs. So I was busy getting a foot massage downstairs and my friend decided he wanted to go get a dodgy massage, right? So anyway, it turns out it was during some big event and there were some uh, officials coming down from Beijing. So during those times, all the sort of vice is shut down in the city and this happens all over China it doesn't matter what city it is but if there's some big event or some kind of uh, official coming there from Beijing they usually go go out and they close down all the brothels and they close down all the sort of outdoor barbecue stores and stuff they try to make the city look cleaner so that it gives a good impression to the official so they were doing that at that time. So my friend went upstairs, he tried to ask for that service. They said, no, they don't have that service at the moment because of this, whatever was going on. So he said, okay, screw it, then I'm leaving. He went down, he came past me and he said, sorry, sorry, mate, listen, I'm leaving. They don't have what I want here. I'll catch up with you later. I said, okay, sure, no worries. Carried on having my foot massage, which costs about 50 RMB, I think it was. It's not very expensive. Anyway, when I was trying to leave and I went to go pay for my foot massage, I said, no, you have to pay for your friend's massage too. And I said, but he didn't have a massage, you know, he was in there for like two minutes. They said, sorry, they can't do what he wants and he left. But they wanted an additional 200 RMB for his massage, which he didn't get. So I refused. I said, no, I'm not. I'm leaving. Okay. And I had my bicycle parked outside. So anyway, I go and I start unchaining my bicycle. And all of a sudden I get surrounded by the staff because I'd paid the 50 for my, um, my massage. I'd given them the 50 and I walked out. So anyway, I'm outside and the staff surrounded me, literally like a 20, 20 odd staff members, these guys that, were, that work inside there. And they demanded that I pay the additional 200 or they wouldn't let me go. And I said, forget about it. You know, I'm not paying for something that I didn't get and my friend didn't get, you know, deal with it. And of course I was speaking Chinese. I was a little drunk at the time. And during all this, the one guy, the one manager guy, kept coming up and started pushing me and started getting all aggressive. And this is where I made my mistake. And I want you all to learn from this mistake, okay? When he started pushing me, I called him to his face. I said, you are a piece of trash, okay, in Chinese, which basically is a nisha lajiren, you know, which literally translates to rubbish person. So what he does, is he turns around and there's this crowd, not only the, the staff, but by now a crowd has formed around of just curious onlookers because there are always people at every time of night and there was quite a big crowd. And he turned around and he said in Chinese, this foreigner just called all Chinese people trash. And of course I could understand what he was saying. I said, what the hell are you saying? And then all of a sudden, left and right i just started getting punched i got punched in the back of the head i can remember specifically like a an old guy riding past on a bicycle kicking me in the ribs i had like just random people attacking me and knocking me down like i kept getting up and getting knocked down just by random people all around me there was about maybe i don't know 50 60 people just going apeshit trying to attack me because this guy said that i called all chinese people trash 
And this is what I'm talking about when I say there's this ultra-nationalism that's built in. As soon as people feel slighted, they have something called a glass heart. Hello. How's it going? <clears throat> Let's stand here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, I'd like to introduce you to um, just a random guy. Uh, stand here. I want you to be in the frame. Here is better. Okay. All right. Say what? You don't need to say anything, anything you like. Okay. Mm. Hey guys, sorry, this guy has just been staring at me off camera for a while. It's very distracting, so I thought I'd just invite him into the shot. All right, so now you're, you're on uh, YouTube. Do you have anything you would like to say? Uh, I need to say a, li a, a, little, a little English. Okay, no problem. Well, welcome. My name is Winston. Nice to meet you. Winston? Yes. What's your name? My name is John. Okay, John. Well, I hope you don't mind if I just talk to the camera. I'm busy doing a movie. You're more than welcome to sit here and watch me if you like. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. I like a movie. Okay. So I'd gotten myself into a lot of trouble, and I was busy being beaten up severely. And I only managed to get out of it by spotting a police, like a small, what you call it, uh, kind of like a golf cart. They have these electric golf carts that they ride around on. And what I did was, I basically called one of those over just by shouting as loud as I could in Chinese, you know, help, police, that kind of thing. They came over and the crowd sort of dispersed. Long story short, we ended up at the police station. They got all the staff there from the, the massage place. I was there. They took fingerprints. They took photos of everybody involved. And then they basically just talked to the guys, talked to me. They, got a, they had to get a, a translator in, like an interpreter who then discussed everything. And at the end of the day, it turned out I was right. I only needed to pay for the 50 RMB massage that I'd gotten. And so they kind of sent me on my way and sent everybody on their way. But the whole point of this is the whole glass heart concept. Now I'm going to try and explain it. In Western countries, for instance, in England or in the UK, uh, sorry, <clears throat> the US or any place like that, we believe in the individual. If I see somebody behaving badly and I say, he's a bad man, you know, other people will agree. And if, let's just say, somebody from Australia came to uh, my country and said, that guy over there is a bad man, I'd agree with him. It doesn't matter who says he's a bad man. If he's a bad man, he's a bad man. But that's because we believe in the individual. You know, you could call my brother a bad man and I'd say, yes, he's a bad man, if indeed he really is. However, there's a very collective sort of uh, ideology or collective what would we say culture over here so if I'm here and I see a local person behaving badly and I say he is a bad man all of a sudden I will have the wrath of the entire country after me saying how dare you call all of us bad and that is the biggest problem things can escalate really really quickly and it's something you have to be entirely aware of if you're going to be living here. Never make it an us versus them situation. Never get into a fight. If you do, don't throw any punches. Just, you know, take it as it comes. Defend yourself if necessary, but get to the, the closest police person. And, you know, this is just invaluable advice that I can give you, is that when you're here, it's never equal. It's never seen equally. If it ever becomes an us versus them thing. In fact, there have even been stories about uh, there was a Brazilian guy who tried to stop a thief who couldn't speak any Chinese and he tried to stop the thief and the thief actually turned around and called on the crowds to help him because the Brazilian guy had you know, caught the thief and the whole crowd beat him up, basically beat up this good Samaritan for trying to stop a thief and simply because he couldn't speak the language and it turned into an us versus them situation. Okay, so that's probably about it. Um, this has been kind of weird with the, this guy staring at me, but I'm just um, happy to, you know, show you guys what it's like to shoot here. So, would you like to say anything to everybody before I finish? Okay. Would you like to say something? Please, no. Okay, all right, great. Well, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking through with this rather difficult topic. I hope this has helped some people and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. So until next time, can you help me? Can you say, stay awesome. Stay awesome. Excellent. Cheers. Thank you.